So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anderson Shum. I am uh, a professor and associate head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Hong Kong. Today is a great honor to have you all here. Um, during this uh, difficult period, uh, all of us are stuck home. So hopefully you can spend the next 30 to 45 minutes learning something interesting that may have a big implications on your future. So before we get started, I want to see whether you are uh, listening okay and whether you can uh, see our poll okay. So uh, we, have, uh, we, are, we are going to ask you some questions and hopefully we can make this section as interactive as possible. All right, so um, are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so first question that we would like to ask you is, um, why are you interested in joining today's talk? So there are several uh, options for you to choose from. You can try and see whether you can uh, quickly enter your answer and you'll get a distribution of your answers on the screen. You can see that this is also the way that we try to conduct our classes in lecture. We try to be as, as uh, interactive as possible to engage our students. And so this is an opportunity for you to see the setting of some of our classes as well. So let's see. Great, so we can see that you're entering your answers. There are uh, some of you who are interested in joining Hong Kong U Engineering. Some of you want to know more about research. Some wants, uh, wants to do it just for fun. And uh, I don't believe that any of you will, will be my fans. So, uh, but thanks for the compliment. All right. So um, I'm glad that uh, you started the first part of the talk by doing very well and answering our survey. So uh, I will I'll start the talk and I will um, focus more on the multidisciplinary research and also on the international overseas exchange experience that we can offer to our students. And later on, I will also have two special guests to join us in this talk today. All right. So I think a lot of you have heard of Hong Kong U Engineering, and that may be one of the reasons why you said you're interested in joining Hong Kong U Engineering. And part of the reason why you know Hong Kong, Engi Hong Kong U Engineering is that we have a lot of colleagues and students who have done particularly well in a lot of different research areas, ranging from, for example, the optics, um, MRI brain type of imaging materials, to computer science for, for example, DNA uh, sequencing, to sustainability, new materials like new steel, and a lot of very illustrious professors and um, researchers that have come through Hong Kong U Engineering. And that is a great feature of Hong Kong U Engineering. But you may ask this question in your mind. So these are all research. Why, if I want to study engineering, why research matters to me? I thought going to university is just about uh, attending classes, attending lectures by very famous professors and listening to the derivations and the theories. So why research? So I'd like to uh, point out a key difference between secondary education and university. So in your secondary schools, you are learning every day from your teachers as well. You may be doing a lot of exercise and paying very, very much attention to your classes and you learn. But universities is not just the place that knowledge is communicated, but university is also a place that knowledge is created, discovered, and applied to benefit the general public, leading to impact. So research is part of the knowledge creation process that if you enter a top tier research university, you can be part of the knowledge creation process and that will make you part of the knowledge creation and the future creation. And you can see how some of the real impacts are being made real life. And that's a key features of university. So that's why research is important. And you may also wonder why we always say that there are lots of research that are becoming more and more multidisciplinary. I thought uh, if I'm interested in mechanical engineering, I only need to study mechanical engineering topics. If I want to build buildings, I will be interested in civil engineering. Why do I need to know other disciplines? The fact is, as engineers, our task is to solve major problems. And our impact is as big as the size of the problems that we have. And many of the global problems actually cannot be addressed by any discipline alone. 
So, for example, I think a lot of us are stuck at home for reasons of uh, COVID-19. And uh, so people may be thinking that maybe only, engineer, only medicine can contribute to addressing this uh, issue, but actually a lot of engineers can also design devices for detection. And later on, if you need to monitor um, how people flow from one place to another to track the uh, disease, you also need a lot of engineering knowledge, big data, et cetera. So big problems need multidisciplinary research. And the bigger the problem is, the more impact we can have, and we should not be just confined by the disciplines that we are in. And Hong Kong U Engineering is very important and, and very big in promoting that, all right? For example, I think recently, uh, for those of you who are paying attention to some of our news in the, in the faculty, I think uh, recently there was a faculty news showing this team um, from uh, engineering, Professor X Y Lee. Um, they were working with a multidisciplinary team with experts from biological science, marine science. They were designing new ways to effectively remove health hazardous chemical contaminants. And if you pay attention to some of the recent um, Hong Kong U engineering news, you also see more and more multidisciplinary research that are reported every day. Literally earlier this morning, there were also news regarding some of our multidisciplinary research that leads to huge impact. So I encourage you to go and visit our, lab, our website and go and pay attention in the media to see why multidisciplinary research is important. All right. And so you can say, oh, well, multidisciplinary research is so big. Why, why does it matter to me as a prospective undergraduate? Actually, if you come to Hong Kong U Engineering, we want you to be an innovative leaders. We want you to have a technology mindset. We want you to play a big role in building your future and the world's future. And so as an undergraduate, if you can integrate things that you learn from your courses, we have a lot of things such as capstone experience, final year projects, and undergraduate research that we encourage students to participate together with more senior PhD students and professors because of their fresh mindset, because of their excitement, because of their passion. And we hope that by engaging the knowledge that we have learned at Hong Kong U Engineering and solving some big problems with multidisciplinary teams, with students and professors from different disciplines, you will be able to get into the habit of solving big problems. So you can see a lot of our students have done extremely well in a lot of different global competition. For example, this global grant challenge and some even to um, remote places to help make people's life better by building new buildings and helping the um, more developing places. And there are lots and lots of awards that you can see here from different disciplines, combining different expertise. Some of it even is from our uh, final year project competitions and uh, students make a big impact even just as final year undergraduates. So you should not be limited because you think you are young and you are early in your career, all right? So let me show you one very vivid example that is very recent. So a team of students in, for the past few years have been working very hard. They have seen a lot of fishes swimming in the ocean, maybe in fish tanks, but they try to create something called a robotic fish that can maybe swim very fast. So this is a team of people um, considering, consisting of mostly undergraduates led by a professor and they made a world record in the Guinness World Record. So let's take a look at what they have done here. So you can see this team made a world record. This is the, record, the recording of their actual swimming of the fish in a swimming pool. So you can see it, there you go. That's the world record for the fastest 50 meter swim by a robotic fish made 
in Hong Kong U Engineering. Okay, so students, undergraduate students, if they work together, they can have really big impact. All right, and doing something that such as breaking the world's record. All right. And you can also see not just in robotics, not just in uh, robotic fish, but in a lot of different areas, our students uh, are doing very well in this, uh, ranging from this jump starter, creating startup companies, and also um, getting different kinds of recognitions from different competitions. And this, by the way, is a slide that I, I created. If you can see to the bottom of the, of the page, this is just from the Hong Kong U Engineering Newsletter in 2020. Okay, and today is just early April 2020. And within such a short period of the year, our students has already, have already made such a big impact and have had so much successes. Um, as we reported from the Hong Kong U Engineering Newsletters, I encourage you to go there and uh, learn more about some of the exciting examples done by our own students, all right? So by engaging in multidisciplinary research early, students can participate in creating our future and making a bigger impact together. And also, um, increasingly, it's becoming imp more important to have international collaborations with uh, people from the top. And so Hong Kong U Engineering is also very much engaged in working with, with different kinds of um, top institutions, such as Harvard, uh, the Huku, and Oxford, and many other um, universities in the world as well. And our students, by joining into this environment, they can be part of such an inter international environment conducing to um, developing new knowledge uh, with the world's expert. And our students, they can, for example, start working in the lab, in our, in our own lab at Hong Kong U Engineering. And then if they're interested, there are lots and lots of schemes, even for undergraduates to go overseas, for example, to Stanford, to uh, Imperial College, Berkeley, Sydney, and US in Singapore, et cetera. So there are lots and lots of opportunities opened up by our um, programs available to our undergraduate students. So um, I believe that uh, you will be asked a second question very soon. So let's see um, if you can get this right, all right? So the question is, to which country are you most interested in going for exchange if you are a Hong Kong U engineering student? So let us see um, whether you are still with us and interacting okay. So we can see a lot of uh, interest in the US, maybe Japan and UK and Germany, Singapore, mainland China, Canada, et cetera. So I think because of the way you answer it, because of your answers, you, you should be able to see that Hong Kong U engineering is very good for you. Because if you take a look at the places that we will go to later on, you will see the places that you like are actually places that a lot of our students go. For example, um, when you go on international exchange, some of our students go to Harvard, um, some to the UK, um, uh, and some to different parts in Europe, all right? The purpose, the reason why it's so good to do international exchange is because you can get more exposure, and by having more exposure, you can have wider perspective of things. As I mentioned, engineer's role is to um, solve problems. So the more problem you see, the more disciplines you, you have been exposed to, the more people that you've met, the more open-minded, the more creative you will be. And you also have a lot of new experience overseas and you become more mature, you become more dependable. And then ultimately, I hope you will enjoy this journey by participating in this overseas exchange and uh, em embracing the opportunities that we offer, all right? And so you may, you may ask the question, okay, um, you say that there are different destinations that we can go for exchange, but how many students can actually go for exchange? what's the percentage of our students will go for the exchange. So let me see if you can um, answer this question for us. What is your guess? Okay, so I think uh, some of you said 75%, uh, 22%, uh, 50%. 100%, 10%. So we, let, me, let me show you some of the destination and also show you um, the, uh, the answer. So here you can say on average, we have about 22% of engineering students going abroad. Um, this, is, this number is very high because not every student 
want to go uh, overseas and also some of the students, they may be coming from overseas to Hong Kong U to study and so for them it's already a study abroad experience. But you can see many of these destinations are places that you want to go to. Canada, UK, France, uh, Denmark, Germany, Finland, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and a lot in the United States. And this is just a very limited list. The actual number of places that our students go to um, are actually much more, all right? So with that, I hope you are convinced by me uh, in this early part that we hope to provide you with a multidisciplinary experience and an international experience so that we, we hope we can train you into innovative leaders with a technology mindset and a global perspective. And we hope uh, Hong Kong U Engineer, Engineering can work with you to innovate our future together. So in order to uh, have more first-hand interactions with people or with students from Hong Kong U Engineering, I actually um, invited two very important VIP um, to come and share with us. The first one is uh, Angel. Angel is, a, is a, uh, one of our uh, former undergraduates. Um, she did her degree first in biomedical engineering, but she also did a BBA. So she was a double degree student. And second one is a current student, William. He is actually from Indonesia. And um, he is a current year two student from mechanical engineering. So let me invite uh, Angel and William. So hello, Angel. Hello, William. Hi. Nice to meet you. So maybe you can briefly introduce yourself to our uh, large number of audience here. Oh, uh, hi everyone, I'm Angel. So this is me. Uh, so uh, now I am currently a year two MPhil research student, that is master research student in mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm a local Hong Kong people and I am the second batch DSE <laughs> uh, candidate. So after I graduated from my secondary school, that is St. Catherine School for Girls in Hong Kong. I'm not sure uh, how many of you are St. Cat girls here. Uh, after I graduated from my secondary school, I entered HKU, uh, uh, the BBA and the uh, BME program. And then after five years of the degree studies, I, uh, because I want to learn more from doing research, so I decided to uh, do an MPhil under uh, Professor Shum's lab. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Angel. What about you, William? Hi, everyone. My name is William. Uh, I'm from Indonesia, and I'm currently a second year mechanical engineering student in Hong Kong U. And yeah, I'm from Indonesia, and I came to Hong Kong because I think that it's a very good opportunity for me to learn uh, my university life in Hong Kong, and I can learn a lot by going through it. Great. Thanks. Uh, thank a lot, William, too. So let's uh, try and get some information from uh, Angel and William, and I uh, hope you've you can also learn something about your potential experience at Hong Kong U Engineering. So the first question is, so um, I, I, as I know, both of you have engaged or are engaging in uh, multidisciplinary research. So, um, when, so why do you think uh, it's important to do research when you're still an undergraduate? Uh, I think one of the most important reasons why we should do research while I'm still in undergraduate, because like, I can experience and also implement what I have learned in class uh, because usually in one course we only have one lab session or two so it's very hard for me to apply or implement what I have learned in class and by doing this research I can do more things in the lab and yeah I can learn many new things for example right now uh, I'm doing research in topic of droplet based microfluidics and I haven't learned it before but through this program, I can learn something new outside my class, yeah. Yeah, right. I pretty agree with William that uh, by doing research, you will know that why you are studying for certain fundamental knowledge. This is, it gives you an, an incentive for doing harder in the lecture. And I think another great advantage of doing research during your undergraduate is that you can plan ahead for your career. Yeah, why do I say so? Because, um, uh, uh, in my understanding, when people, uh, after they graduate from the bachelor degree, if they are not going to work for the government, they will either go to the industry or they will go to the academia to do research. So when you do research under, uh, during your undergraduate, you will not only know what is happening in the research field, 
and you will not only uh, uh, know what is your research interest, but you will also know something about the industry because there must be some collaboration between the industry and the, and the research lab, just like what Anderson said uh, in previous slides. So that by learning what is happening in the research field and the industry, you can identify your interests and then know what you should do to better uh, equip yourself to fight for your dream position after you graduate. That's great. So thanks a lot, uh, Angel and William, for uh, sharing on that. So that, I think, uh, bring us uh, to, to the second question that uh, I think our uh, participants may be interested in knowing. So what did you learn from, the, uh, from doing the research? You, men lots of you mentioned about uh, different uh, advantages, but for you, uh, what would be the most important learning? I think for me, doing this research, I learned how to think critically so I, I can uh, do a critical thinking. Because when doing research, it's not like when we are uh, having our classes in, in the lecture. We not only listen to the professor, but doing research, we have to self-learning and also uh, think and also study more about, our, about the material by ourselves. And we have to be more creative. I think it's very uh, different with the lecture and we can learn something new from that. I mean, yeah. In fact, I cannot agree more with that because when I was an undergraduate, I also uh, uh, did research myself. Um, I also found that because one of the most important thing that we can learn is not the actual discipline knowledge that we learn, but actually how we can learn. So we, we want to learn how to learn. And the process of doing research in discovering new knowledge and creating new knowledge is exactly forcing us to very unfamiliar area and try to practice how to learn in a completely new field. So I'm glad that you already recognized that as a year two student, William. What about you, Angel? So for me, I think uh, I learned uh, how to look at the big picture instead of a small piece of puzzle. Because uh, say for example, when you have to share your research project with your lab mates or with other friends, you may want to share something really impress yourself. Say, for example, I spent a whole month to uh, improve the uh, improve the setup, and and which have blah 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 advantage. But actually, they are not really interested in what you have done. But they are interested in how your research topic is going to solve a, maybe a global issue or other medical issue, and what is its significance? How is the impact? They may want to know more about this back picture. So when I do research, I start to realize that I don't have this mindset. And I believe when people have this mindset, they can become a good citizen and have become a good uh, leader because they can look at the back picture. They are giving some value to the society. Great. So I, I, I hope you are as excited as me uh, about seeing our uh, two uh, cur current and former students already showing such maturity and understanding about um, how research has benefited their outlook. So um, as I know, both of you also have had some experiences in the overseas exchange. So can you share a little bit about that and maybe what did you learn in the overseas exchange as well? Uh, for me, I went to Oxford in the UK last summer. So I went for a two months, in, uh, two months exchange. And I think it was a very great experience for me because I can learn something outside my major. So there are two, two courses, one is economics and one is philosophy. And it's very different with what I learned here, mechanical engineering. So I think it's a very great opportunity for me to learn something new and also different with what I've learned. Because as what Professor Anderson has said, as an engineer, it's very important to us to learn any disciplinary outside our major. So I think it helps us to solve the problem when we want to solve something we need to see from different perspectives. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so I went to Perugia, Italy during my year two summer. And same as William, I go to I went to there not to learn uh, anything about uh, engineering. I just went to there to learn Italian and I'm a complete beginner. I don't have any survival skills in Italian. And I think I learned to be independent and be super, super cheeky because I have no friends, I have no family, and English is useless in, Ita in Italy. And as I mentioned, I 
have no knowledge about Italian. So I have to be bold and ask all kinds of questions to survive in Italy for one month. <laughs> I see, great. So you can see that our students also get a lot of opportunities, not just confined within engineering, but they can go overseas to become more independent, to learn new language, and to have fun, right? So, um, so from this experience, what do you think is the most uh, memorable experience during this trip? Anything you can share with us? Uh, I think for me, the most memorable thing in my exchange is that I learned, so I took this e economic course. It's about the development economics. So it's about learning e economics in developing countries. And I don't have, I didn't have a background in e economics before. So I think learning that, the process of learning that is very memorable to me because I can relate to the, the course because my country, Indonesia, is still a developing country. Mm -hmm. So when I learned something about that, about the problem in, in developing countries, I can relate that to my country. And it makes me think how I can, am, or how I as an engineer can help my country too. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And it, it is also interesting that he is learning something about his home country when he's in another country. Uh, so yeah. for me, I did a lot of things in Italy and all of them are really memorable. So if I have to choose one related to you guys, that must be the last lesson in my, uh, in my school, which is an oral lesson. So I was already freaking out for that oral lesson because during the oral lesson, the teacher will only speak uh, native Italian quickly and then she will play uh, and she will only play a uh, native Italian speaking. And I understand nothing. It's just like animal speaking to me. I, I don't know anything about that recording. And then why I feel so nervous and freaking out because all my classmates just skipped the class. I was the only one there. Then I can't pretend that I, I know what she is talking about. And then, and then it becomes, turns out to be one to one. And then I can see, I can see, I can saw from my teacher's face. She's so frustrated about my, because of my classmate. And she's also so frustrated because I know nothing. I, I, I can't understand what she said. So I, I changed my mind. And then I try to actively ask questions. And then I hope that uh, by changing the mode of teaching, it, the lecture, the lesson, the two hour lesson will become angel oriented lesson. And then I, I forget how it ends at last, but at least I try my best mm -hmm. to learn from her. So yeah. to the teachers and parents out there, you can see our Hong Kong U engineering students are some of the most attentive students willing to go to a lesson, even though she's only the only person <laughs> in Italy joining the lesson, all right? So uh, with that, thanks again, Andrew and William for sharing with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope the audience have uh, enjoyed your sharing as much as I do, all right? So please continue to do well and support Hong Kong U engineering and help our potential future uh, students, yes, all right? Sure. Great, thank you. Thank you. So uh, with, uh, with Angels uh, and, uh, and William sharing, I hope you can see that there are a lot of values in doing multidisciplinary research and overseas exchange, um, the topics that I shared today. And if you want to do more and if you want to find out more about Hong Kong U Engineering, what is better than entering Hong Kong U Engineering? And there are lots and lots of opportunities. For example, uh, Hong Kong U Engineering is the first engineering school in Hong Kong. We have very good ranking internationally. Um, we have very strong international community, as you have seen. And we also have a very contemporary curriculum that we are modifying and we are improving um, year after year. And of course, as I repeatedly mentioned, I hope that you know this already, that our research is world-class and our undergraduates have a lot of opportunities to participate firsthand in the research and creating impact. And so um, in, uh, in our school, we have uh, a lot of uh, different engineering subjects. So ranging from civil, mechanical, electrical, electronics, industrial, computer science, and uh, of course, we also have the biomedical engineering program, and we, we have therefore um, 10 bachelors of engineering, and also very new program of BASE. This is a bachelors of arts and science. So you will be able to find one that will fit your need, uh, no matter what you're interested in. And all our degrees are professionally recognized by the uh, Hong Kong Institute of Engineers, which according to the Washington Accord, uh, allows our trained students to also uh, have the qualifications to get accredited by other professional engineering uh, society all over the world. 
So we have five departments, 10 programs, and each year we have about, we have about 600 new undergraduates, and we have about 2,500 undergraduate students, 150 teachers, and about 20,000 graduates. So this large number of graduates actually provide a very important resource for our current and future students, because they can talk to some experienced alumni about building their future. And that's a unique strength of Hong Kong New Engineering. And also, as I mentioned, we have uh, different pro 10 different programs. I don't want to repeat myself here. You can see here. But the key is that we have very strong program and curriculum, starting from the very basic engineering course. So some knowledge that en any engineers uh, should know. And then you gradually become more and more specialized. And of course, if you are interested in doing research in a particular topic, that would be the topic that you have to be quite specialized because you are always doing the world's first and only type of research of that nature. So you have to know more. And our syllabus provide the breadth and provide a possibility to allow you to engage in all of these. All right. So uh, with that, um, that concludes my part of the sharing. But this virtual admission talk has not finished because we have an important uh, guest again. Uh, this is this time it's not a student. This time it's a it's a one of our colleagues, uh, our uh, admission deputy chair, Dr. N Wong, who is able and willing to answer questions that you may have regarding our program and the admission process and. Once again, thank you very much for your time, and you are uh, welcome to answer and uh, ask any questions. Okay, thank you, Anderson, for your very interesting talk, and also thank the two students for sharing with us. Uh, my only experience with Italy was uh, Pizza Hut and Spaghetti. <laughs> so you opened my eye to what Italy would be like. Of course, there will be nobody will be going. So, um, well, I'll be happy to take any question you may have. Uh, in fact, I got two questions uh, on my iPad already. So um, the first question uh, spells like this, what are the criteria for overseas exchange program? I got amazed by this question because you are not even in Hong Kong yet, but in case uh, you really get amazed and this is a very popular question. And um, uh, turns out that, uh, uh, well, the answer was to my surprise because I used to be a Hong Kong U student, but uh, back in my time, I didn't have that kind of opportunity as, at all. So uh, the current status is that uh, if you are year two or year three student, you can uh, apply for overseas exchange. And then there are actually um, two hierarchy as far as I know. Uh, we do have overseas exchange opportunity uh, at the faculty level. And also we have a centrally administered exchange program whereby students can apply. And then you will be mostly based on your GPA. So uh, once you are in, please study hard. So uh, with a high GPA, you've got a high chance of being shortlisted. So this is a two-way process. We will recommend a student to the overseas institute, and then they will also look at your GPA. And then if, you, if they think they are good by looking at your portfolio, then they will admit you to the uh, exchange. So it can happen uh, by the end of year two or also year three. And, uh, the, but then also, a final year student is not entitled to that because uh, once you are out, there is no way coming back or your graduation. So you do it at the end of your year two or year three. And that question that popped up is that uh, will admission interview be required? Uh, the answer is a uh, definite yes. And uh, as far as I can recall, uh, this year interview sh should be conducted uh, tentatively. It will happen in June of this year. And uh, we are also debating on the format of the interview and uh, very likely it will be by online means as well. So the number three questions is internship compulsory. I think uh, I can uh, answer it from the perspective of my department. Uh, I belong to Triple E Electrical Electronic Engineering, and internship will be an integral part in our curriculum. Uh, it also happened during the summer of year three. Uh, we'll do the speed dating uh, between you and a um, most matched company. And then you apply to it, and then you will be uh, getting an interview from the company. And uh, some of the time you spend a summer working as an intern in the company or uh, in some particular cases, like um, uh, when I was a student here, I worked for a whole year in Motorola in Taipo in Hong Kong before it just uh, collapsed and then uh, doesn't exist anymore. So, um, so that's my experience. So you can do a gap year or you can do a summer in a company. 
in case uh, you don't find the outside company interesting, you can also apply for research assistantship uh, with our professor. So uh, I remember in some years I did uh, take some, quite some student into my group uh, to do AI research. So this is kind of flexible. You can do it outside, which is the preferable way of uh, doing internship or else if you cannot find any outside job that is um, uh, satisfactory to you, then you can also apply for doing research uh, assistant uh, under uh, the guidance of our faculty members. So the next question, what's the usual condition on international A-level students uh, for B -Eng, B medical engineering and science? All right, so uh, to put it simple, you need to have good grades. So to be more specific, you need to have good grades in math and physics uh, besides meeting the language requirement. So you need to have a, a primary language and then you also need to have a secondary language. So for Hong Kong local and uh, non-local students, we require you to have uh, both English and, uh, well, English and then plus a second language, which usually turns out to be Chinese. And then uh, if you aim for FinTech, uh, which is a relatively new program you have to have you have to score an A or better in your math. Uh, the next question is um, uh, more concerning local Hong Kong students. And uh, well, uh, first of all, let me repeat the question. So IGCSE is canceled. Can I still be admitted to Hong Kong U? Is there any other way to prove my Chinese language ability? Uh, well, we are actually closely monitoring this situation and our senior rank um, school management team is uh, again having constant meeting on that. I think information will be, um, will be released uh, very soon, uh, probably before our next admission talk uh, regarding the, um, this language requirement. So stay tuned uh, and I think that our next um, talk in the role will be on 21st of April. So just uh, mark it on your calendar and reserve your time. So next time, please ask this question again, all right? So do we need to have compulsorily learned Chinese language in the first year? So I think the answer is no for non-local students because uh, we don't uh, specify what the second language would be. But uh, of course, for a lot of Hong Kong students, they um, would uh, naturally take Chinese as their second language. And in the past, students used to take the IGCSE in case they fail the local Hong Kong exam. But uh, as I just said, the IGCSE has been called off. So uh, we are uh, working on the workaround. So please uh, stay tuned for our next admission talk. Uh, next question, is physics a necessary component to engineering? Uh, it depends on the year of entrance. So if you're applying to Hong Kong U year one, then physics is a necessary component. But some of uh, our students, they got uh, direct admission, uh, directly admitted into year three, and then, uh, uh, then we will evaluate uh, their physics background uh, that they uh, would have taken up in their community uh, college study. So uh, local Hong Kong DSEs exam physics is not a necessary component if you apply for direct admission because we will be evaluating it case by case. So uh, next question, since my public exam canceled, can I still get admitted to Hong Kong? The good news is yes. And then we are working on it very hard days and nights to, um, uh, because for example, for IB, we will not just, um, because this has been canceled, we will look at your predicted grade as well as your past portfolios uh, supplied by your school. So we will do a holistic uh, evaluation uh, on an individual basis. So don't worry, just apply for Hong Kong U. It doesn't hurt in any case. So how long the overseas exchange lasts? So it's up to you to decide. So uh, if you decide not to come back, that's fine. But uh, in, uh, normally students would like to graduate. So they will spend uh, usually one semester. Uh, in, in other cases, they can, uh, it can last for up to one whole year, right? So how long is a overseas exchange? I guess uh, I already answered it. So can I study a minor program if I enter to a senior year entry? Uh, well, that question got canceled. All right, so uh, where am I now? Since how long? All right, so 
and I eleven. All right. So I was on seven, and then then eleven. So I can I study a minor program if I enter to senior year. Uh, yes, there are lists of minor available. Okay, because they are so minor, so I, I don't really care about that. So, um, but uh, as far as I know, you can select whatever minor you like, because they are just minor, right? So, can we work part time in Hong Kong U within campus? Uh, well, we we have to uh, obey the law all the time. So, as long as the Hong Kong immigration permit that, uh, it's fine. But uh, I, I tell you a story. Uh, a lot of my students they don't care about their income because they are already rich enough. So, they, what they really treasure would be the research experience, uh, which I treasure as well. So, uh, for a lot of um, undergraduate students, they don't they don't get paid in terms of monetary sense. They don't get uh, paid in money, but they get uh, paid in their job satisfaction and then the excitement arising uh, from research. So this is already exemplified from Anderson's talk. How are the local student treating mainland student? Uh, how are the local people treating mainland student? Uh, if you happen to be a mainland student, I suggest you you come to Hong Kong U to study and then you tell the answer yourself. All right, normally I treat my uh, mainland student extremely well. Not just by treating, uh, but I actually treat them to restaurant and uh, local cuisine. Right, so enjoy a lot of treats here. Uh, is there any kind of exam or selection necessary for candidate when you get to choose more specific courses in year two? Well, this is very technical. So, uh, selection necessary. All right, so we have a common uh, intake in our year one, and then you get exposed to all disciplines. All right, so you do a lot of window shopping in the first year. Uh, just make sure your GPA is good enough to entitle you to have the freedom of choosing, all right? And then you get specialized into any of our uh, degree program that we offer. Uh, well, uh, from statistics, the popular programs that students choose are usually civil engineering, and in recent years, a lot of students are choosing um, computer science. And uh, well, we have a more or less even distribution among the programs. So depending on the career prospects, students may have different faults. And the uh, market is changing all the time. Uh, the reason for the blooming of the computer science is apparently due to the blooming of the AI. So a lot of students, they fancy AI, and then they will choose computer engineering. and that, uh, some of the students, they want to do software together with hardware, then they will choose um, electrical electronic engineering. So how many students got admitted in DAS? Uh, uh, a lot of them, right? <laughs> For example, yesterday I interviewed seven and uh, I, I made offer to all of them. Usually each of our department will have a quota around 10 and then the counting all together because we have, um, well, all right, the answer just pop up. So I, let me give you a specific uh, answer. So uh, more specific answer, there will be around 32, 34 of them uh, who get uh, admitted to Hong Kong U through the direct admission scheme, right? Now, once again, you have to have very high GPA in order for you to become competitive. So um, study hard, play hard, but always remember study hard comes first. Um, due to delay in admission, what's the last enrollment day to pay the deposit fee? So as long as your bank account is, uh, is there and uh, you're in good shape, please pay it uh, as soon at your earliest convenience. Right? Now, a lot of students, they get, actually get multiple offers uh, from uh, university in Hong Kong. The suggestion I give to this student is as far as, as long as you can afford, just pay it. Right? That is it, because uh, when you are having more choices, the chance of making the best choice would be uh, higher. So it also depends on when the offer is uh, issued to you. So we will specify a end date, a uh, due date for the deposit fee to be paid. All right, since the IGCSE, IGCSE is canceled, we will be required to provide evident to prove my Chinese ability during interviews. Now, um, we're working on the exact interview format, but language will be a integral part, important part on the interview. So uh, we will have at least two colleagues to evaluate you in terms of your language capability. So don't worry. And um, 
And always, uh, we need a second language. Okay, we will find a means to, to evaluate you in that sense. Okay, the next question is, uh, by the way, we are also looking, uh, checking into the possibility of waiver because uh, due to the cancellation of a lot of um, uh, the uh, uh, standard exam. So in case all exams are gone and there's no uh, official way of doing that, then we can also uh, offer the waiver system. So just bear in mind, we are always flexible, okay? We move very dynamically. We are changing all the time. Uh, but the only thing that doesn't change is that we want to maintain a very high yardstick and standard for all students that we admit into Hong Kong U. Um, next question, 18. I got admitted into uh, engineering and I'm most interested in computing. What's the criteria to get into computer science? Can anyone take that later on? Does it require? Um, we have a soft quota for every department because we admit something like 500 students every year, four to 500 students every year. And due to the limitation of the lab facility, we need to impose a soft quota on every department. So uh, evening it out, you'll be around 120 per department. So again, for those of you uh, who really want to get into your interested program, uh, please study hard, get a high GPA, because it uh, give you a lot of uh, say in choosing whichever stream you want to aim for. Is the Cambridge Exchange program of uh, three years applicable only for computer science engineering or open for all departments? I will come back to it later on. The answer is not yet available. But um, well, we do have a Hong Kong U Cambridge uh, program, and it is uh, for year one students. We have a short listing of around 10 uh, year one uh, freshmen who got uh, admitted to Cambridge. And uh, we have been uh, running it in the past few years, and a lot of students actually uh, are quite into this program. And it also uh, uh, causes a <laughs> major uh, attraction of Hong Kong U because uh, it can be a stepping stone to Cambridge. Right? I'm in. I'm a international student studying CBSE Indian curriculum, and the board has cancelled examination for all international students. How will this affect? Now, uh, we won't uh, defer our uh, ongoing longitudinal interview. So as long as you have applied to Hong Kong U, uh, we will uh, put you in our pool and arrange interview. And then uh, we will also uh, cope with the um, ever-changing situation around the world. So as I mentioned to you, our senior management is having very frequent meetings uh, as to how we can cater for uh, the fast-changing situation. So uh, as long as you have Good score, you're a great student, then uh, no worry. You, if you want to come, uh, we'll find a way to meet you. If I get an offer of ESP entry of computer engineering, can I apply double major, even I'm a ESP student? Yeah, for that, I'm not sure. I think it has to be evaluated uh, case by case because uh, you only have very limited time if you get admitted into year three. So, uh, I come to me in case you really get a meeting in the computer engineering because it's run by the triple E department. Well, the second, uh, the answer just pop up. The answer uh, is no. If you get admitted into year three and if you want to do a, a second major, then uh, um, uh, we probably cannot accommodate it due to the limitation of the credit, all right? So I have a full 4.0 GPA in SAM 1. Is there a chance I can be admitted to Hong Kong U? It depends on which year you are in. For direct admission scheme, we have, you have to finish a high degree or associate degree before you, are, uh, you become eligible for the DAS scheme. I'm a Hong Kong citizen, but I've always been studying overseas. So how high are the chances for me to... Oh, talking about the dorm. Um, we have very limited places, and it's always on a competitive basis. Um, so you need to compete for a dorm place, right? To put it simple, you just apply to it, and then you need to. Uh, they will have a committee to shortlist uh, uh, wherever they want to take in. When or how many days will we receive the? All right. So suppose you get an interview. So how long you have to wait before the result come out? Uh, it ranges from one to three weeks. 
um, uh, for my department, we usually uh, do the interview and make the uh, decision on the same day. So, and then we'll feedback to the faculty office to do uh, the uh, processing. All right, so it won't take long, don't worry. Um, can check update. You can also look for and check out the updated status on the application system as frequent as we want. But normally, um, in 99% uh, of cases, you know the outcome within one month. So if I decline to, per, uh, the next question, if I decide not to participate in the general admission interview, would it affect my chance for invitation of interview for engineering? Now, first of all, I'm not quite clear about uh, uh, the questions. Uh, there seems to be a lot of interview awaiting you, but uh, my personal advice is for you to attend every interview because um, it's the chance for you to showcase yourself. And particularly during the pandemic, the only way uh, that we can uh, uh, have interaction with you will be through interview. So try to attend no matter what time zone you are in. I think that's all for today because time is running out. So once again, I think our uh, next coming up admission talk will be on the 21st of April. So mark it on your calendar. If you have unfinished question, please uh, remember to ask this again then. So that's all for today. Thank you for attending.